Okay, everybody, just uh, like to get your attention, please. Thank you. Um, like to uh, introduce uh, Paul Astles and Haley Johns from the Open University. And um, this is the session on Does anyone know what sustainability means? I'm actually particularly, I want to chair this session. I feel quite excited about it. So, uh, yeah, I will hand over to you. Thank you very much. Well, uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to our session. As as was introduced, it's uh, does anybody know what sustainability means? So we're going to be talking about developing practical approaches to supporting non tokenistic actions to promote sustainability in a distance learning curriculum. So I'm uh, Paul, a learning designer in the STEM faculty at the Open University. I'm Katie Farragher. I'm also a learning designer at the Open University, but I'm in the Wales faculty. So a different collection of subjects to work with. Um, just to forewarn people, there is a bit of audience participation. We're going to ask you to do a bit of work in the Padlet and do a bit of icebreaker activity. Hopefully, that's not going to be too terrifying and um, hopefully quite enjoyable. But yeah, just to forewarn you, um, if you've got smartphones with you, you can scan the QR code throughout as well um, to access the resources that we've, um, we've designed and want to share with you. And just to nod to those online, if you're watching the live stream, you can engage with the QR codes as well, but we won't be able to kind of interact as such um, as well as we can with the people in the room. So if you would like to have a copy of the slides, you're more than welcome to. You can scan the QR codes. Um, we are going to just run quickly through what, what we're going to talk through. So we're going to very quickly explain why we're here today. We're going to look at um, where are you, as in you, the people that are in this talk. We're going to introduce the team that works on this strand of work. It's not just Haley and I. We've got a small uh, group activity that follows um, some information about sustainability in module design, and then we're hopefully going to share some key takeaways that you've taken from our workshop, fingers crossed. Thank you. So um, yeah, just a little run through of why we're here today. Um, our purpose is to um, support you to reflect on and develop practical approaches for non-tokenistic, so really meaningful actions with students in terms of embedding sustainability in their modules. Um, and our aims are to show you how learning design can connect with sustainability, um, to kind of form that shared understanding of what practical steps you can take and to consider what that might look like in your own context. So obviously that's going to look slightly different for everyone. And um, for us at the OU, we work in a certain way that's quite different to other universities. So, you know, have a look at what we've done and think about how you can adapt it to you. What's really important is that context matters, right? So um, as we are going through this, it's really important that you think about how you can apply what we're doing at the OU into your context. And through the different activities that we're running in this workshop today, you'll get the opportunity to do that um, as part of the session. So really think about how you can take what you're hearing and kind of considering in this session into your own context and also tell us about it as well. So at the end, we've got a some, some information about how you can get in contact with us afterwards as well. Okay. Thank you. So we're going to start off with where are you at and where are you? Um, and this is our first part of so if you'd like to get a look and scan the QR code, then I'm going to give you two tablet, and you'll see the first two columns are set up with, um, with our icebreaker activities. So if I take you over there now, you just see question number one. So have you thought about how you might embed sustainability in modern design? If you have, tell us what that looks like and what that might look like. And question number two, do you need, um, I think I should say, do you need help articulating um, how to embed sustainability in modern design? Um, and you know, tell us, let us know your thoughts. Yes, of course. Here we go. Wow. Thank you. I'm quite at best time. Has everyone been able to scan the QR code? Okay. Yeah. I can come to you with a QR code on the page if needed. So. It is exciting. Yeah.
I'll show you. Here you go. No problem. Thanks. No worries. So we'll be using this Padlet throughout um, different activities so you can kind of um, keep it open in the background. And... I think this comment just here is really interesting. So in terms of doing a development field, I think we found that as well, that it's something that's, there's a lot of momentum about it, isn't it? Um, at the end. So it, I think a lot of people kind of discover it. What sustainability is, how it looks different at different institutions. Yeah. Really. Lots to learn. Okay. So we can we can probably spend another thirty seconds or so on this. But I reckon. We're just doing the icebreaker task. So a few scan the QR code if you want to get involved yeah, as well. Do, yeah. Cool. I did my contribution while we are walking. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Just whilst we're having some microphone help, you, obviously you can carry on with the task. Do, do add some other um, thoughts to the both questions if you've added one already. That's totally encouraged. Yes. So thank you for your contributions there, everybody. So the and as I said, we'll be going back to that Padlet um, throughout. So just keep it open in the background, and we can we'll be using it again. So the um, that's all right. So I get to introduce us as a team, um, and just to acknowledge really that that it's not just myself and Haley that that have been part of this um, work stream. So we've been working on um, various ways to support sustainability in module design um, at the OU, and, and myself, Haley, Kathleen, Katrina, and James are all part of that group. So I just want to kind of acknowledge their work and input into everything that we're talking about here today as well. So in terms of the um, steps we took, the very first thing that we did was to have a look at what else was already happening in the sector. So step one was gathering together um, resources from other institutions, having a look at what existed already. And then the next step was to audit those. So we kind of start to identify themes, particularly groups and see what we can start to bring out and what we get back. And with that information, we took that to our very first learning design sustainability group meeting. And then we you know, worked out how we wanted to share that information, what we were going to do with it at our own institution. Um, and then leading to step four development of our infographics. So these will come up at various stages um, in the session today. And we get to see the, the infographics that we designed and the practices for them. So that's basically how we adapted the information, what we added to it, and how we decided to present it to someone to next week. Next slide. Brilliant. Um, so step five, then we started to um, look elsewhere around the OU and find out what other people do and what sustainability looked like in their context around the university and started to connect, start to make those working relationships with them and think about how we could kind of inform them what we were doing and how that could translate across different departments, different faculties. Following on from that, we um, gathered lots of feedback, so from learning I was going to say external, but outside of the learning design team, so from people around the OU who don't work directly with us, we gathered feedback from them, but we also spoke 
um, a link to our own teams and learning designers and found out what they wanted from sustainability resources and what we helped them. So then we were able to refine the, um, the infographics that we made. Um, step number seven, we considered where we wanted to dis disseminate, you can say that properly, um, our work up to this point. And so that included looking at this conference, looking at um, other conferences around the country, um, and also internally, so through our social media networks and through Yammer, things like that um, within the energy. Um, leading up to planning for conferences like this and putting our work forward to the Green Gown Awards, so those awards are at the end of November. So um, our work is up to the there. We'll find out. If we win in November, yeah. <laughs> um, so these these are the final four steps of our journey so far, okay? And so this year, um, I and James, um, my colleague, delivered three talks at the Eden Conference on our work with sustainability up to that point. And that was um, kind of built on in the stuff that we're presenting here. So we shared the infographic that um, we mentioned and we shared how we were starting to use them, basically. Um, we then were considering next steps in developing support for colleagues to champion uh, sustainability in the, the design process. And this led to creating some crib sheets, which you can have uh, via that QR code. Um, they're also already on the Padlet. So in the resources column in the Padlet, you'll find them there as well. Okay. Um, those crib sheets are designed to prompt and support people to consider how to use the resources that we've created to um, have conversations with people and, and, and to, to talk about Im embedding them the resources to help the design process. So how you might embed sustainability in different contexts using our resources. Okay. And that's the purpose of the crib sheet. So step 11 then was engaging with students as co-creators. This is a real kind of core part of the work that we are doing. And um, bringing student voice into the creation of some of the resources that you'll see on the uh, crib sheet four, which is the skills cards. And you'll see the skills cards in um, the task a bit later. And so these skills cards are were created um, through um, students telling us what they um, wanted to see as kind of um, skills uh, within the context of sustainability from their point of view. So we gave them some information about um, that exists from UNESCO around kind of different skills that that are um, out there that that we are connecting with. And we wanted to get the um, an idea of how the students felt about them and the language that was used in them and how we could make them more um, student centered, basically. So the skills cards that you'll see in our resources are a direct collaboration with um, the curriculum design student panel at the Open U University, which is a group of about 3000 ish student volunteers that kind of um, come, come together to provide feedback on various tasks and things that we that we can um, send to them. So student voice is a real key part of um, our, our uh, mission, if you will. And it's a really important part of promoting sustainability within your institutions because students are the most important people in that institution in many ways because they are not only um, there to kind of you know um, bring their experience and their lived experience if you tap into that but they they can also think in much broader ways than we can as staff so the, there's there's a lot of opportunity there for engaging with students and that's another part of the task that will come up a bit later about how you can do that in your context okay and so the final step was uh, planning for this, uh, the ALT conference 2023. So uh, this workshop specifically, and then we're hoping that from the ashes of this workshop, we'll, we will create um, a, a workshop that, that, that we can use kind of within the OU and external, like from the OU as well. So we'll, we'll be able to kind of offer that as um, an external workshop, hopefully for uh, the various work that we do with non-OU people as well. Um, so this I think is on to you. Yeah, so this is um, back over to me again. So sustainability in module design. This is a chance to show you one of the infographics that we have mentioned already. So you'll see it in the bottom right hand corner there. Um, and the, the purpose of creating these infographics really was to, um, as the title of our talk suggests, um, promote that understanding of what sustainability actually is and what that looks like in a distance learning context. So that was our starting point for creating um, these infographics. And we structured them as a series and they are 
um, structured in an incremental way as well. So each one builds on the previous one. And the idea is that we want to kind of approach module teams who are at different levels of understanding. So um, this one, for example, that you can see in the bottom right is um, the very first one in the series. And it's um, aimed at module teams and academics who maybe they want to start thinking about sustainability and how that might be embedded into their modules, but they're not really sure how to go about it. They, they want to have those discussions and find out more first. Um, so yeah, as I say, it's to spark that initial conversation, that initial curiosity about sustainability um, and provide that starting point for who um, module teams can talk to. So whether it's us as learning designers, whether it's a sustainability lead in the faculty, so that might be another academic who has a particular interest. Um, there's different pathways into, into those conversations. And if you want to have a look at that infographic as a whole, again, you can scan um, the, the top right QR code just there, and that will bring up the whole infographic for you to see. And don't worry, because the QR code's still there, so if you haven't scanned it yet, you're not. Um, so in terms of how we um, use it, so the, the point of the resources here are about how um, you can embed the process of, of kind of um, uh, sustainability in the module design experience for academics, but then also have it meaningful for students at the end of the process, right? So there's a bunch of um, questions that we came up with um, that relate to, they're basically kind of conversation starters that you, you can have with staff. And the um, answers to them um, are linked with the crib sheets. So if you want to know more about, do you want certain sustainable skills and competencies woven into the student journey, you would see crib sheet three, for example, right? Um, a practical way that we've embedded this within module design with a maths module, it was an applied stats module at level two, um, is um, we basically, we use them to um, guide a conversation. So they came to a d d design session with no um, uh, ambition of uh, embedding sustainability at all. It wasn't on their radar. and But there was a huge opportunity to do that from what they were talking about. So they were talking about the skills and the potential um, content that, that, in my mind, could absolutely connect with sustainability, but they just hadn't built that bridge themselves yet because they were thinking about maths. So um, with the questions that were on here, and I'll just go skip through them slightly. So um, we we kind of zoned in on that the, they wanted to use, um, they wanted to know the answer to the bottom one, sorry. So the pra practical ways to make learning outcomes connect to sustainable skills development. So they wanted to adapt a specific learning outcome and then use activities related to that learning outcome to uh, embed sus sustainable skills, which will which you'll see on the skills cards when we get there. Um, so the um, each of the responses here can can provide you not an exhaustive way of embedding sustainability, but just somewhere to start, basically. Okay. Yeah, and this infographic. Thank you, Paul. This is one way of answering one of those questions. So. Um, this is another infographic from that series that we've um, been talking about all the way through. And um, this is um, designed to answer the question, do you want to know more about the current resources on the OU's platform OpenLearn? So OpenLearn is a selection of free resources. Anyone can access them. Um, they are by definition open. And the, um, the idea behind this is that we wanted to embed things that were already there and to signpost module teams to the wealth of resources that already exist. Um, around the university. So that was part of our kind of fact finding mission when we started talking to colleagues from different departments and different faculties. This is one of the things that came out of that. And so, um, yeah, the infographics as a series are kind of designed to answer those question prompts and lead model teams through that journey of discovering and understanding and then embedding sustainability. And again, if you want to scan for this one, you can use that QR code just there. What does it look like in real life? I hear you ask, all shouting at me. Um, there was, um, so one example that I gave you just before was a maths module. Um, and this example is a geology module. So they explicitly are called geology and sustainability. So they were already thinking about sustainability, but what they weren't thinking about was how to connect the learning outcomes and the skills together, essentially. So that, that was part of the, the design input that, I had, but um, I wanted to highlight how they're embedding sustainability um, alongside some of the skills 
skills that, that they're embedding. So um, they explicitly state in text um, within their material how their material connects with the sustainable development goals from the UN. So um, at the start of each topic as a couple of hundred words or something so that students are explicitly aware of how the material connects with um, sustainable development goals. Um, and they are also embedding UNESCO skills within um, what they're calling geo problems. So there's a series of geo problems which are based on um, real life examples of geology issues that students might need to overcome, but that are explicitly related to sustainability. So um, the idea being there that they're, in, they're able to then embed a whole range of the UNESCO sustainability skills, which you'll see on the skills cards in a minute, um, such as participatory problem solving, um, collaboration, things like that, where you can encourage students to look at a problem, overcome it. And, and, and that in a sustainability context is a really powerful way that module teams can embed UNESCO sustainable competencies in a practical way. Um, and that could be done in pretty much any subject, essentially. Another thing that they have is reflection. So, um, so alongside it being an authentic assessment experience, because it's a real life kind of work based geology problem that they're overcoming. Um, they also are encouraged to reflect on how they did that. And that's another key part of the UNESCO skills is about kind of re reflecting on and, and, you know, taking a position on certain things and, and, and that, that kind of stuff. So it's really uh, neatly embedded into and quite explicitly embedded into various parts of their assessment strategy, as well as their um, activities and skills. OK. So the fun bit. The small group activities. So we're going to go back to um, the Padlet, but I'll hand over, over to Haley now. Lovely, thank you. Yes. Yeah, so as Paul says, we're going to go back to the Padlet. There will be an opportunity to scan the QR code on the next slide. Um, so I'll come to that in just a second. Um, but we have three tasks for you, and each one of these is designed to take around 20 minutes, give or take. If it's slightly shorter, that's fine. If it's slightly longer, that's probably fine as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, each one of these is um, is designed to take a length of time so we suggest kind of prioritizing one is what i'm trying to say rather than trying to do them all in a short window um but you can see here you have a choice between reviewing the skills cards and the unesco competency tree graphics um so those resources that we've made considering how they connect with learning outcomes and or activities so that could be um you know starting to apply that to your own context um reflecting on including student voice in design of content and then the third task is considering authentic assessment in the context of sustainability. So those are the three options. Here's that QR code back again. Um, and yeah, I think everything else up there I've said. So yeah, prioritize kind of giving a, a decent chunk of time to one of those tasks we, we'd suggest. Details will be on the Padlet. There's time included in that activity time to read through the information that is um, in the columns on the Padlet. And then you'll see the task text there as well. And in a minute, we'll bring up the Padlet slide as well, the Padlet page even. Has everyone had a chance to scan the code? Is that all okay? Super, lovely. So I'm gonna close this one and bring the Padlet back up. Here we are. Yeah, so if you just scroll across to the right, you can see the three tasks. And if you have any questions as you're working through, just shout out and we can do our best to support you. And if you're watching online, we'll probably mute our mics at some point now, just remembered, um, so that you aren't just hearing kind of discussions about the task, but do feel free to engage in the, in the activity. If you like. If you'd like to, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, I've just muted now. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So every, everything that we shared is 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 freely available to you all. So. But um, the, the, the key is that we, we want to know how you use them. So that's that's the most important thing. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just taking a little time, so it's two two twenty five now. So I can call it in, yeah, at the latest. Yeah. It's so bizarre, yeah. I keep on forgetting that, that they're there and then like re remembering last second. <laughs> now we're ready. <laughs> and that's okay. I think it's gone well so far. I mean, and that hasn't been going, which is nice. Hey, yes. Do our bit. Yes. It's really nice to hear like this because I know we've been talking through this a lot. Like in reality. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, do you think we should, um, like, at, at the end of the slide, about that just says the Open University, or we could go, go back to our tap slide, do you think we should ask um, the chairperson to, like, take a picture of this so that we can put it on? Yes, it will be interesting. Yeah. Uh, no. That's the thing. Yeah, it's like it, the room could have been packed. Or, yeah. So I think it's a good, good, good amount of people though. Yes, yeah. So Marina, um, have you met Marina before? Sorry, I should have introduced oh, her properly. Um, so she used to be an LD in our team. Uh, so she worked in the one that Nat is the, now the senior in FPL. Yeah. So at, at the time, Nat wasn't a senior. She was a uh, uh, learning designer in that team with Marina. And she left to go to our so she went to do i think the similar role or maybe maybe like i can't remember if it was a senior or, or like a slightly different context of the role but yeah that's so she but i only ever met her online so it's like she was so she was like it was like right near the start of when i first joined so it would have been like the first three months or something so yeah yes yeah 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 absolutely yeah no, I almost didn't recognize her at first, and then I was like, oh, God, it's you. Yeah. 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 
I'm going to go and do a little walk around, make sure that people are able to access things and stuff. Are we all okay with the task and you've accessed it okay? And any questions? Okay, that's okay. <laughs> no, that's fine. No problem. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, just uh, as long as you, you can access it, that's the, the main thing. So. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So I think it's really, I think it's just... Have you guys been able to access the task okay and you're happy with what you're doing? Yeah? I think we're understanding this time. Good, okay, perfect. Well, if you have any questions, just shout, okay. Okay. Have you guys been able to access the task? Okay. I don't know. Doing. I'm very, very no, no, that's okay. Let's let's talk about it. So, what which task have you chosen? Perfect. Okay. And <laughs> perfect. Okay. And so your question is. So the aim is to look at the cards that, or the the information that's in that column. So, or, so is that this? Is that this? Yeah. Yeah. And then the these. I think the skills cards are underneath it as well in um, in the yeah. column. Yeah. So everything that you need is in that one column. And then so the aim is to re review those and then think about the answer to question to, to number two, which would be kind of think about how you could use the uh, use the cards in a design session, basically. So yeah, that's the. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. No, no, that's fine. Take 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 some time to kind of absorb it, and then and then uh, if you once you've taken that time to absorb it, I'll I'll come back to you in. So, so what's the context? I mean, these cards are for staff. So these are for so these are for um, staff involved in the creation of content. Yeah. yeah. So we've got plenty of time left of the task, just so we all know. So we've got about just under 15 minutes of time to, to go through. I'm just trying to remember how much we've got left after the task. It's just the key takeaways and stuff, isn't it? So they should see. Yeah. Yeah. 
you say for it must stick? Not too bad. Yeah. I guess we can yeah and that's okay and then there'll be time for questions i guess so yeah i think we're doing fine for time it's like if we get to quarter two and then the rest will take about 15 minutes max so yeah it's okay It is the digital information literacy. Yeah, yeah. And your explanation was perfect, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> we should have acknowledged that, yeah, that it was a totally deliberate choice. I think we've just um, had an official photograph. <laughs> or, or there's just a random man taking pictures of everybody. So we've got about six minutes left of the task. So if you haven't yet, um, please take this opportunity to add some stuff to the column of the task that you're that you have selected. So try and answer the question for the prompt number two in in, in that column. <clears throat> Best part is actually just waiting. 
I can see people are typing. So that's good. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. No, it just. No, yeah, it means people are adding content. Yeah, that is good. Yeah, go for it. like acknowledging that um, uh, people like the, that it's, it, it's a lot of information to take on and, and so on like that when we come back it's been like a reassurance that that's okay that's normal you know, yeah. like, yeah. it is a lot to take on mm. yeah 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 Yes, yes, exactly. So yeah, we can kind of, I guess, um, thank people for their time and things and, and yeah, acknowledge that that's okay and normal. It, it, it's you, isn't it, that's bringing people back? Yeah, 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 yeah. You do that and then like you can kind of, I guess, um, we've got time to kind of um, briefly um, acknowledge that we're about to get people to reflect on things so you know that, that kind of stuff and then you can hand over to me that's fine yeah yeah a couple of minutes I reckon yeah 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 so three more minutes to add your thoughts to the task board <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah, no. We'll catch up. Be And just, just to say, um, obviously this Padlet will be open for the rest of time. So if you wanted to kind of go back to it and reflect and add stuff afterwards, that's totally fine as well. So you're more than welcome to reuse and come back to this at any point. Just thought I'd flag that. Uh,
Okay. okay, thanks everyone. We're going to stop you there, if that's okay. Um, so that's been our 20 minutes on these tasks. And yeah, just to acknowledge, thank you so much for um, the, the thoughtful conversations that you guys were having. It was really nice to come around and, and listen to what you were saying. Um, and it is a lot of information to process. So thank you for your, your patience with that as well. Um, yeah, we, we sort of acknowledge that, that there's a lot going on there. So um, yeah. Thank you for bearing with us on that. Um, let's go around and just ask for some reflection. So who had a go at task A? I think you guys were on task A over here. Do we have any other task A's? Yeah, cool. Who would like to go first just to kind of share a few reflections in a nutshell? Super, thank um, you. Yeah, so we were talking about, um, we sort of went down a bit of a route of thinking about sort of bigger picture as well, thinking about how these sheets could be used to go to uh, sort of budget holders and procurement mm -hmm. teams to say, you know, we've got to take sustainability into consideration in those items too, which is almost a step before before the, the design areas. And and the idea of uh, educating uh, colleagues as well on the sort of drilling down into more specifics about <laughs> sustainability, thinking we talked about that lobbying as an example. And having those sort of, um, uh, sub workshops in a way, yeah. sort of next step workshops that can take place. And we talked about um, individual sort of learning experiences as well, and learning from each other and thinking about how to, to one person uh, sustainability might be one thing, but yeah. to another, it's something else in that. It can go down subject specific, mm -hmm. but also uh, I was thinking about how where I work. How Sort of dotted around the country and the world, so sustainability is very different in the areas that they're in. Um, and the idea of sort of reflecting as well, thinking about um, what we do do, taking a moment to look at what we do. Is it sustainable? If it is, then that's great, but how and um, mm -hmm. sort of how could we then mirror that in here? Yeah. Um, that's great. Sure. Thank you so much. Super. That's brilliant. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's fantastic. Thank you. Should we go to you guys over here? If you'd like to share a few thoughts about what you discussed. We was um, very positive about the resources. Um, we but the viewers felt that we could use their loss and things along those lines to make structuring the conversations, mm -hmm. starting off with that, yeah. um, considering what we mean by sustainability a little bit more. Typical name, like, does anyone know what sustainability means? Like, it, it's left sometimes for people to interpret that however yeah. they interpret yeah. it. So, I think it's really nice to think of skill helpful and the way it's structured around skills is as well. It's, it's nice because it's stuff that they're probably be doing anyway. So, mm -hmm. it's obviously, so it's quite nice. Um, yeah. yeah, for us, I think it's really important to have a um, so um, I think getting identifying when the fact story exists because the way it's all framed mm -hmm. right now it's actually very easy for colleagues to see that they're already doing some of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. So they don't feel like it's another big fat that they hit in the mid. Yeah, just exactly. Feel like, yeah. Oh, I've got to do accessibility requirements, I've got to do sustainability, I've got to make sure that you know all these things and yeah, it's quite overwhelming when we get yeah. to the design phase where you are having to design a lot of this practice. Mm -hmm. But actually going well, where does it already exist and what you're doing it makes it a little bit more of an easy conversation starter. Yeah, yeah. And then you get into the well, we're not doing this. <laughs> we yeah. just do it. Yeah. So, yeah. What else? What else can we do? Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. That's Definitely. really good to hear. Just for the online people, I've just turned my microphone back on. So hello and welcome back. We're just um reflecting you, on the so task. There we go. Sorry. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. We should have passed the microphone around if we had yeah. a more portable one. We would have passed <laughs> it around. Sorry. Um, did we have any task Bs? Yeah. Would you guys like to share anything? Okay. So, yeah, um, I think it was a little bit challenging. I hope you've done it right. I'm sure you have. <laughs> um, 
So task B was all about setting up this kind of panel and this committee where we get students input. So we were thinking in university setting that could be really good. Um, and so one because um, the university has the student staff committee that already exists, and so it could be quite nice to incorporate and develop that further. Um, and to try and include volunteers who would want to be in that panel and to ensure that there's a diverse range of students as well, making everything fresh. Um, and by including the student voices, um, it keeps everything relatable and up to date. Um, and that also ensures sustainability and longevity of um, those or that material. Um, we would also make sure that things are always accessible and easy to understand to, again, make things sustainable. Um, and task we also focused quite a bit on this um, co-creation and co-design, like initially before the activities were made. But I also think, you know, taking into consideration feedback afterwards, it's also good to have that continuous loop of improvement. Um, and then also spoke about some specific actions to take. And I suppose it's always a little bit difficult to involve students in things and to kind of motivate them. And so I think maybe some sort of incentive around that could also be valuable. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. That's brilliant. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Did we have any um, any people who worked on task C at all? Or yeah, no one worked on task C. That's okay. No worries. Brilliant. Thank you. So I can hand back to Paul then for our yeah so the, the um uh, there, there is a slide that just says reflection but i'm just going to ask you to scroll across to the reflection column in uh padlet and this is where i'm going to ask you to reflect so the question is if i grab my notes <laughs> Oh thank, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, is um, what might you take forward into your context and when attempting to embed sustainability within the design of course material? So what might you take forward? And I can give you a couple of minutes just to reflect on that. <laughs> that's OK. I think we've got about seven minutes. Yeah, that's OK. But thank you. for. <laughs> and uh, obviously the question is in the padlet so what what might you take forward into your context and whilst you're writing that just to acknowledge that what I'm about to talk through is the key takeaways, or possibly Haley, I can't remember which way around it is, um, are also in the Padlet, so you can review those later too. Yeah, and just whilst you're typing, um, just to connect with some of the stuff that was said before, I think um, embedding sustainability definitely shouldn't be this bolt on, it should just be kind of part of the process. So trying to think about existing frameworks that, that this information can connect with. So for us at the Open University, oops, sorry, I just touched the microphone for the online people. Um, so for us at the Open University, it's... Um, connecting with frameworks like the employability framework and the digital information literacy framework, which are existing ones that connect really well with the skills that are part of the um, sustainability skills cards that we've shared. So it's not just about thinking about how to bolt it on, it's about how to literally embed it into what you do currently. And that's part of taking it into your context. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's fine. Mm. Framework is, is now compulsory module team have to use it. Yes. So how far are you getting these resources in Pretty. every production process? Pretty far along, yeah. So um, there's something at the OU called the Inclusive Curriculum Tool, 
and we have embedded sustainability prompts into the newest version of that. Um, so it's becoming part of kind of business as usual to review alongside existing uh, inclusive frameworks and, and um, equality and diversity kind of checks and things. So it's it's um, it's becoming less of a bolt on and more of a kind of something that's integral as part of other existing stuff. So yeah, it's it's getting there and we're much closer than we were, you know, even last month. So yeah, that's good. So I'm gonna um, unfortunately end the time here of, of this reflective task in the column. Uh, but if you're still typing, do feel free to finish what you're writing. I'm just aware that we have five minutes left and I want to finish the session on time like a good learning designer. Um, so I'm going to hand back to Hayley. Um, if, oh, I'm gonna is, go back to the slides if that's okay. There you go. So apologies that I don't have time to read through some of your reflections, but I will look at them later. And thank you for your time in putting them down. Really appreciate it. Super, thank you. I'm just going to check that I'm not muted. Lovely. So um, one of the last things we wanted to say was just, um, this is how you can stay in touch with us if you'd like to, and if you'd like to share um, you know, what you end up doing or what you're already doing on your sustainability journey at your institutions. And um, we'd really love to hear about that. So you can get in touch with us via um, Twitter. We're still on the bird. We're not using them the x sorry <laughs> sorry elon um and you can also email us as well so um yeah a couple of different ways to get in touch with us there and um, we are really keen to put together a kind of reflective piece on our um open university learning design blog about how different institutions are embedding sustainability so um well worth read we have loads of excellent colleagues who write for the blog so if you haven't already seen it go and check it out and if you'd like to be involved potentially in a post on there um, do reach out and get in touch with us we'd really like to hear from you and I think that brings us to our key takeaways. So those are on the Padlet. Um, if you want to have a recap of them at any, at any stage after you leave. Um, but yeah, just a, a few key points. Um, we want to, uh, wanted to focus on identifying those non-tokenistic, really meaningful actions um, that can support change, knowledge building and skills development. So hopefully um, you've seen that in what we've produced. And um, create opportunities for student input into resource design because their ideas, their comments and their critiques are invaluable. So that's part of our CDSP curriculum design student panel work. Hopefully you've seen that um, throughout our session today as well. And then finally, recognizing that everyone's journey towards taking that meaningful non-tokenistic action to embed sustainability um, will be different. And I think everyone's kind of explored that through those tasks today as well. So hopefully you've seen how it might be applied in your own context. I think that's everything. Yeah, so just um, to acknowledge before the applause, which you obviously richly deserve, um, there's resources and links at, at the end of the slides, which are also available on the on the Padlet uh, resources slide um, column, which is the last column in the Padlet. And that's it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so any questions, I guess we've got two minutes. A couple of minutes. Do you have any Standing questions? To silence. Yeah, we, we won't look at you, it's okay. When you use this, you have to read, and you've not got any resistance from teams that say their curriculum is already too full, and how do they fit more into it? Yeah, I, it's a really good question, and it's actually a really important question because that is one of the first barriers that we we we, we addressed actually um in, as part of the work that we, we were doing with some, some some of the module teams that we have worked with with this uh, these resources so um kind of like the the answer that was given around there around kind of existing um things that are happening it's about not um making it seem like it's additional work because it's not it's about how these how these skills fit into what's already there. And if there's already, and if it is overloaded, we would also be having a conversation about reducing the work as well. But 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 the to answer your question specifically, it's about how what we've shared with you connects with what's there and how to make that meaningful for the student experience. So it could just be something really small, like one of the skills, for example, um, but that has a really big impact on the learning experience. So it could be, you know, like a, a collaborative task, for example, that, that exists in the material, but they hadn't really thought about explicitly connecting it with skills from the UNESCO competency framework, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of thing is, is, is how we would, or indeed have um, gone about it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's really important. 
Yeah, the worst. Thank you so much, Mark. Cool. Thank you.